What would happen if a Major League Baseball game were to be played in the hardest park to homer off of? Stay tuned to find out. Welcome to this video of MLB The Show 24. Now, this in this video, the question is, what would happen if an MLB game were to happen in the most difficult park to homer off of? Now, to be specific, the kind of home run I'm talking about is a home run that's in the traditional way. In a home run that's over the fence, that let's say it would be like 320 to 400 and something home run depending on which part of the field you're talking about the only way to homer off it to, to make a home run in this park is if it's an inside the park home run now before talking about the specifics of this kind of park I'll, I, sh I should give a thanks to Ivan Perez my cousin and also he happens to be a streamer on Twitch the link to his Twitch channel is in the description. If I forget, to, if I if I remember to put it there, if I forget, make sure to let me know in the comment section down below so I can put it, the link in there. So why did I make this park? All right, so I had a plan to make two different kinds of parks: a, a park in which it was impossible, or practically impossible to to make a traditional home run off of and one in which it was practically guaranteed to make to have a home run the the other park i'll probably make a video a separate video for that later on as of uh, this park this particular park uh the idea was that i want to make a park in which literally impossible to home or off of in the traditional way so what i did was i got the dimensions to for the fence to be as far away as the game would allow me to, uh, allow me to uh, get it to which was I think it was 500 feet towards all sides of the park so good luck getting a homer off of that now homers that have been over 500 feet have happened over the course of baseball history so it wouldn't be impossible per se to get a home run on this kind of ballpark the other catch, however, is the fact that the fences are as high as the game would allow me to get it to. Let's say uh, big monster heights of the of fence. So basically, you have uh, 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 the big monster and height uh, of a fence towards all sides of the ballpark, plus the fact that the that the fence is 500 feet away from home playing just about every single uh side of the field so it's already hard enough as it is the only way you can you, you're gonna get a home run off of this park is it basically if everything were to go right and the and a homer would be like let's say 600 feet like that would pretty much be the only way to get a homer in this kind of ballpark uh, but last but not least, the, the the height of elevation in up uh, above sea level is like only one feet, which is a minimum the game would allow me to to do. So not only is the uh, not only is the fence like really far as far as as the game would allow me. But also the fence is also as high as the game would allow me. But last but not least, like there, there's not gonna be much air support because it, the the park in itself, the location is at one feet above sea level, and that's that's the minimum the game will allow me to do. So basically, there's no such help in terms of getting a home run. The, you know, traditional sense is the, the way in which we we enjoy. You can get inside the park homer though. Like this park is more beneficial towards uh, players that not only have a, some sort of power towards a gap, but also are extremely fast. Imagine Ken Griffey Jr. and his prime playing in this kind of ballpark. Like he would not only win MVP every single time, but he could 
pretty much break if he wanted to that badly. He could break Barry Bonds' home run record in this park with inside the park home runs. And just imagine that for a second. It, it, it pretty much be OP if you were to think about it. So, so yeah, and, and you can, as you can see uh, from th some of the highlights here already, you can pretty much see the power of this kind of park. Like this park would benefit more towards speedsters that also have some sort of power uh, right going right towards the gaps. So if you were a GM and your home park would, would be this park, you wouldn't want to have power guys. You want to have uh, uh, speedy guys who also have a little bit of power in in the bat as well. That that's the kind of player that you actually want to have uh, on this on the team and whatever team you want. Now for this for the process of which teams I want to choose for this particular experiment were teams that were right in the middle of the pack in terms of ratings for batting, uh, you know, in combination of contact and power. The Tampa Bay Rays and the Boston Red Sox were the two teams that I could pretty much find that were kind of, you know, in combination were kind of in the, you know, like in that sort of tier of being right in the middle sort of range. So yeah, that's pretty much what I did. Now the next part of it was I was thinking of doing like a like a simulation of of a season with the Red Sox. See if 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 in simulation if in simulation the the all the all the stuff you know, the, the park itself would pretty much impact the play in itself uh, uh, in the team in comparison to visiting teams. What I found out was that the, the impact was pretty much non-existent. There might have been some impact, but I, I think it was, I, I don't think there was much of an impact though, at least in terms of simulation. I think if, if this kind of park were to exist in real life, the, the the discrepancy between home park and all visiting parks were to be much more apparent in my opinion. But anyway, that's where I'm gonna leave it here. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon for more MLB The Show 24 road to, uh, content. And I do road to a show content for those of you that are new. And I will see y'all in the next episode of MLB The Show 24. Peace.